Good morning, everyone. Great to see you here uh, at this early hour. It's morning in Sweden. Uh, we're going to be hosting a webinar today. Uh, my name is Thomas Loftblad, the CEO of, uh, of Handheld Group. I'm going to be hosting this together with uh, uh, Mr. Johan Hed, who's the Director of, of Product Management. And we're going to take you through this um, new product introduction. Um, it will take about half an hour, and we will go through the specifications. We have a Q&A section on the right-hand bottom, right-hand side of the screen. You can see all the uh, um, all the questions posted, and Johan and I will take turns in in respond to to any questions that you may have. We will also stay on after the presentation is done uh, to keep answering any questions you might have about the presentation, about us, or about the product. Um, but um, um, we, we will try to keep the presentation as short and snappy as, as possible. We know you guys are, are busy and, and want to get moving, but we're excited. We have a great, great uh, product to present to you today, and we hope you're going to like it. So first, a couple of short slides about us, who we are, what we do. <clears throat> so Handheld's been around since uh, uh, the late 1990s, 97, 98, Handheld was formed. So a little bit over 20 years. Uh, we're today a global manufacturer. We sell our products throughout the world. Uh, we have 10 our own sales subsidiaries in, in different regions of the world. And we work, um, our, our, our go-to-market strategy is a channel strategy, and we work with the likes of you, our partners, that we sell the products through. We're a privately held uh, company. It's a family-owned uh, business, a very tight-knit. Um, the benefit that we have is that all the uh, investments that we do and our, our, our time scope and timeline is, is very long-term. Um, and we've proven that with the partnerships that we have, the product portfolios that we built and the support around the products that we do. It's not a um, short-sighted type of business, uh, fly-by-night type of, of company. We've been there for a long time. We've been consi consistently building up a portfolio of uh, fantastic end-user customers who, who use and, and enjoy our products. We have a, a rapidly growing business the um, um, our business model and the products that we bring to market seems to uh, resound well with the uh, the end users and with you, our partners, and because our business are are, are constantly growing. And the last couple of years, we've seen a, a tremendous uh, upswing in in the demand of our products and the um, and the services that we can offer. Most of you already know us, of course, since since we're already working together, but our DNA is really in the ruggedized uh, sector of this uh, of, of of the industry. Um, we we started with really tough outdoor types products. So if if you're looking for a red thread in the products that we develop and the things that we do is that all our products are built to last. All our products are built for real uh, life situations for end users who do need um, a, a proper ruggedized computing tool for uh, their field work or whatever their environment that they're in. We have over the years uh, learned quite a bit. We've been building and been involved in IP67, 68, fully waterproof, shockproof military standard product since since the 90s and those 20 years have learned us a lot and we've learned our lessons in what things do work and we also learned our lesson in what things do not work and we try to implement that that, that knowledge and that experience into every single new product that we build and consistently try to improve and 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 get better in the product side and uh, we today have a, a a, a competitive portfolio in the sense that we focus on a segment of the market and our segment that we've 
uh, focused on is really what we call rugged mobility. It means that our, our units are meant to be uh, mobile, portable, uh, being able to carry with, being able to, to be outdoors, uh, and they're always uh, a, a rugged type product, IP65 or higher, depending on <clears throat> the uh, the goal or the targeted <clears throat> applications that we're looking for for specific products. We develop them in 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 different flavors and uh, and and in in different ruggedness. So, but the the red thread and what we focus on and what we're really good at is the section of rug mobility. And we built that portfolio now over the past uh, 10 to 12 years, um, and we've been through a number of iteration of handheld uh, products. We today offer um, handheld devices or PDAs or smartphone or phablets or whatever you, you choose to call them, but smaller form factor devices that you can carry with. And we also carry uh, a tablet portfolio. and. And today, the tablet portfolio really is divided into two, where we have Windows-based tablets and we have Android-based uh, large form factor. On the small form factor side, we still have some legacy Windows embedded handle products, but we uh, all the new products that, that come out are, are Android-based. And with that, I'm going to leave a uh, handover to Johan. Johan will take you through uh, the presentation of this new product, uh, which is a fantastic looking product. Uh, I will come back a little bit later in the presentation to go through availability and next steps and pricing, et cetera. Hope you enjoyed your show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas, for that introduction. So, uh, I will talk about uh, the fun stuff here uh, and uh, mostly why um, why most of us uh, are attending this this webinar of course the the new product launch uh, which today is a large form factor android tablet. So first before going into the detail specification and the actual product I just want to mention a little bit about the device trends that we see among tablets and uh, we see a uh, a slightly improved performance. It's not as drastic as it was five to seven years ago, or maybe even three years ago. It, it is rather linear and maybe a little, even decreasing a little bit. We see increased RAM uh, on the memory side. Uh, we do see increased CPU uh, calculating performance, uh, but we also see old legacy applications uh, still being able to run over over multiple years compared to a couple of years ago, there were a lot of updates on the applications uh, to be able to uh, to keep up with the new uh, new technology, new uh, new hardware. Uh, we don't see that as much uh, anymore. So a somewhat improved performance, uh, but not as drastic as it was, uh, uh, yeah, some years ago. Few communication changes. This is something I mentioned before. This is some what we've seen in, in the last last year or two. There are some changes. We have a new Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, 5. We see uh, some additional speeds on the 4G, etc. But the next step, obviously, is the uh, the 5G generation, which is starting to kick off likely sometime this year. We'll see consumer smartphones the whole infrastructure uh, needs to be built up for 5G. So it will it will be uh, some time before we see it, but we're also really excited about the new opportunities that, that we can um, address when it comes to the 5G communication that will take place later this year. Android OS, uh, we, uh, we definitely see a, a trend where more uh, devices and, and application and use cases are shifting a little bit from uh, or not shifting maybe because Windows uh, desktop version, so to speak, is increasing as well. We see a general increase of tablets, but Android OS is definitely taking market shares out of out of iOS. Uh, this is something we can see the Apple version. Uh, so it is it is definitely an, an OS that is maturing and also for the professional industrial usage we we see increased um, availability and uh, of professional applications out there 
And so we also see the application stability, support stability, meaning the applications that are developed are more in depth, more advanced, that will last for, for many, many years instead of the, the short sighted applications that only maybe worked for Android 5 and had difficulties or compatibility issues when the Android OS developed so fast it was in the past. Uh, we don't see that type of, uh, of changes uh, in the later Android versions that we're experiencing now. So with that said, uh, I would like to uh, introduce the brand new Algis RT8. This is a truly mobile and lightweight yet powerful 8-inch Android tablet. We really focused on on mobility, as Thomas mentioned. This is the our core DNA is mobility and ruggedness. So we make sure the focus has been to make a an, an eight inch Android tablet that has the the rugged features that we all want and need, but then in a slim, tight package uh, that making it as mobile as possible. So not only being a great looking device. It, it has some key features as well. And I just mentioned mobility first. This is something we're focused on. Real world capabilities in terms of performance. I will mention a little bit on the specifications on that. Outdoor ruggedness, of course. This is our DNA. It needs to be rugged. Ruggedness is, does not only include the physical ruggedness of, of being drop and shock proof and vibration proof. It also has to do with long life cycles, field replaceable battery, long extended life on the battery so you can work a full day's work as well as accessories for efficiency a huge ecosystem for uh, uh, of accessories available and of course something we've we've mentioned earlier this year when we have stepped into the software layer of things uh, and i will come back to the mexico suite uh, here later in the presentation something that comes standard on the uh, algis rt8 when it's shipped So what do we have here? This is the Algis RT8. It has a powerful Snapdragon processor, eight cores, and running on 2.0 gigahertz. So a lot of computing power. We've made sure to have plenty of RAM, four gigabyte of RAM, as well as 64 gigabyte of storage. And it has a massive 8,200 milliamp hour field replaceable battery. This is uh, based on the feedback and the trends that we've seen is, is really uh, to, to have a battery that, that can last a longer shift is, is important. Display, 8-inch touchscreen, uh, high-resolution uh, display. It's protected by strengthened Gorilla Glass, sunlight readable, uh, as well as having the multi-touch with rain and glove mode, which we know for us, of course, being outside, working in the, uh, in the outdoor environment, the uh, rain and glove modes are, are important. Sensors are fairly standard. What you can expect today, we have acceleration meters, magnetic sensor, gyroscope, pressure sensor. Uh, in addition to that, you see on the right-hand side in this in the picture, the F1, F2, F3 keys. Those are pro programmable function keys, so they have a default setting, but you can also use them as uh, initiate macros, for example, in your own applications via the, uh, the SDK. And then if we're going to talk about the keys at the top there, you see the power key on the right hand side of the tablet and at uh, below the F1, F2 and F3 keys, we have the volume up and down keys. Cameras, uh, this is increasingly important uh, as well. We, we need to keep up with, with uh, how things, what we expect from a, from a tablet or a smartphone today. So we have a high resolution, high performing 30 megapixel camera uh, with autofocus and flash on the rear and a five megapixel camera on the front side. Charging, USB-C, uh, which, which helps. Uh, in terms of it's more rugged and more stable and durable than the old micro USB C, uh, sorry, micro micro USB. So the USB C is interchangeable. You can insert it and charge a device. In, in uh, you can turn the cable in any in an, a new direction. Uh, so that helps for the durability. Uh, it's also Qualcomm Quick Charge. So uh, having this large battery, of course, it also helps being able to quick charge that battery. And we have on the go feature as well, meaning the tablet can act as host or as a client. 
docking connector, this is something we're quite excited about. Uh, I will show you that on the next slide. So I will get back to that. But we have uh, HDMI, Ethernet, USB, and we have additional rear connector exp uh, for expand expansions. Uh, but this will be more clear on the uh, on the next slide. But the rear expansion then has USB and serial serial interface. Under the uh, the battery cover, we have micro SD card if you want to extend the storage cap capability further, and the uh, SIM is a nano SIM uh, dimension. On the positioning side, uh, we've been working closely with Ublox for most of our product. We uh, they, we think this collaboration is working well. This Algis RK8 is equipped with the Neo M8N uh, GNSS receiver. And capable of receiving GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, as well as Beidou. So plenty of, of options and uh, uh, for the satellite configurations. In addition to that, we also have an uh, GNSS antenna connector on the output uh, input side. So this is what I'm talking about here. What we can see clearly that on the rear side is really where this uh, tablet comes uh, comes into play here. We have, see the large battery in the middle. We have four locks on the battery, making sure it's secured tightly to ensure the, the IP rating. Uh, on the bottom there, the this is a, a docking uh, for desktop dock or vehicle dock, et cetera. You can see that uh, those, those pins there at the bottom. And uh, that can provide not only communication in form of USB and be able to charge the device, but you charge the device, you have USB, uh, communication as well as the uh, HDMI video output. So that opens up a lot of capabilities for various docking solutions. And then on the uh, right hand side, that expansion port docking solution is, is available for, for customization. We have USB and serial <coughs> uh, with 5 volt power. So there is uh, uh, plenty of opportunities for, for added features to this tablet as well. Above that, uh, that uh, connector that we have uh, a little uh, a IO connector for the GNSS uh, receiver, similar to what we have on our Nautis X6 device. So you, we can uh, add an external GNSS antenna uh, to, for better, better performance on the GPS. So a little bit on the, the casing. Uh, this is a uh, a device that is uh, tested uh, from 1.2 meter drops. The size, this is something we're rather proud of. We've worked, we've focused a lot on the dimensions and weight of this device. So it's only 14.5 millimeter thick. So you will feel that it's, it is really mobile. And that also goes to the next point there, the weight 635 grams. So, when you uh, get this device in your hand, you carry it around. It's it's uh, it's really a product that is ergonomically uh, an excellent eight-inch uh, tablet device. IP67, uh, meaning it's fully dustproof and waterproof, and also uh, making sure that it has uh, the uh, the capability for to work on the high altitude up to fifteen thousand feet. Temperature is something that you are familiar with our devices. We work anywhere from minus 20 to plus 60. So we make sure the tablet and, and power management is designed to be able to operate down to the very low temperatures as well as the high temperatures, temperatures to 60 degrees Celsius. And storage a little bit further range, minus 40 to plus 70 Celsius. Certification, uh, we have uh, at this point a standard CE, FCC and IC for the European and uh, US North American market, as well as RCM for Australia market. It is GMS certified. Uh, we've gone through plenty of uh, mill standard A and G testing in terms of temperature, vibration, shocks, drops, etc. cetera, uh, as well as mill standard 461F, which is an excellent uh, proof uh, of being a low noise, well designed product. So this is something that we we have it on a couple of products, and uh, it really helps with the, uh, uh, of course, for the not only def defense opportunity, but it's also a sign of good low noise uh, product design. 
so don't have the full details uh, on the the different mill standards that we do support in this uh, this slide but uh, when you look on the website when it's released tomorrow we will have full declaration of the supported standards so communication i earlier said we not a lot have have changed uh, we uh, we're releasing this product with android 9 and uh, android 9 comes with uh, a lot of good support for the applications I would say developed for Android 7 and above. So there are changes, of course, to the Android system, but overall the uh, there hasn't been as big changes as it was in the past, which is which is nice from an uh, support point of view, which is what we are working with a lot. That applications should run and work year after year. So. We we uh, we're releasing it with Android 9 with the GMS, meaning it has the Google Mobility Services incorporated into the OS images in terms of uh, the Google Play Store to access all the applications, but also the the maps and the other Google software. That's one side of it, but it's also a the GMS certification goes through a lot of testing, compatibility testing, making sure that the the device is compatible with the uh, with the applications that are on the on the Play Store and other applications that follow the latest Android standard as well. So it's not only a certification to incorporate certain applications, but it's also a certification that is a quality stamp, a compatibility stamp uh, for the device. Communication, not a lot has changed. Uh, we have uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, uh, as well as uh, Bluetooth and NFC. Looking at the uh, 4G bands you see here at the bottom, uh, we have uh, the the uh, standard one, two, and five and eight on the 3G. And then you see a lot of bands there on the 4G, uh, both the basically global band for global support. Uh, something I want to point out is the band 28, which is increasingly popular and in, uh, in the South America, but uh, also being a main band in uh, Australia as well. Uh, while in Europe, we are focused on the uh, on the bands that that we've had here in the past, uh, and uh, uh, one, three, uh, seven, and, and twenty, and uh, this tablet also supports the North American bands. So great, that is a little sneak peek into the uh, into actual tablet, but uh, the tablet is not uh, uh, it's not a lot with uh, without any uh, accessories. So focusing on the accessories, we are at launch here coming out with a vehicle dock, an advanced desktop docking station. We have hand strap stylus, carry cases, uh, protection, and, and pole mount. So. We're building the ecosystem, so the product is being launched now, and then we are building the ecosystem of accessories in the uh, throughout the product lifecycle, which is, as you know from our device, is quite long. So I want to show you the uh, the advanced desktop de docking station that we have here. So you see a real nice uh, desktop docking station. You see the iOS here at the bottom. So this uh, has power input to the far left. We have Ethernet, we have HDMI, so you can actually dock it into the office situation and get the image up on the large screen. And then in addition to that, we have two USB ports. And looking at it from the side, you'll see that how uh, how slim the, the actual device is. And, uh, and yeah, this is what it looks like from side. The uh, vehicle cradle uh, is uh, also something that we'll have available. This is something that you are familiar with. Uh, if you've seen our other devices, uh, we have a this first release of the vehicle cradle provides power as well as a locking feature you see there at the top. So you can at the top so you can secure the device and charge it and it has the uh, the standard and uh, mount on, on the right on the rear side to mount in the uh, vehicle and here's a slide uh, from from the from the side as well of the the vehicle 
uh, docking station. So you can see that we've left some air as well, and this is to circulate the air around the tablet to cool it uh, during during hot environment that it could be in in a, in a vehicle, for example. So a, uh, I want to round this off a little bit on the software layer. So hardware is one thing being durable, being rugged, having the right performance, but we also taking a step into to adding software layer into the handle devices. So the Algis Arcade comes standard with the Maxco Android apps. That includes the Maxco staging, Maxco manager, and then you have access to Maxco kiosk mode. So we have variants of different kiosk modes you to lock down the device if you prefer. And the handle OTA service uh, is uh, the handled over the air update service as we call it. So with that, we're able to uh, push out software improvements as well as security updates or bug fixes, uh, et cetera. So this is something we control through the handle update system. And you can initiate it at any time by just going into setting and click update. So the Mexico suite, uh, this is the last slide before I hand it back to Thomas here. So I, I want to make a push for this. So all handle devices, the new handle devices that we are releasing come standard and with a free of charge uh, included Maxco uh, application. So with the Maxco suite, it's designed to facilitate quick custom setups. So we have Maxco staging. You can stage the device, you program the device, how do you want it, which applications you want to have running. And when you have the, uh, the, uh, the core uh, base built, you can stage the devices and copy that setup on multiple devices very quickly. Uh, so this is a great way of setting up anything from um, a few devices or a lot of uh, devices on a larger deployment. And you can stage it through NFC or barcode uh, reading through the camera uh, uh, or stage it through a, a file as well. 